Epidemius marks the return of free LC Lords to Warhammer 3 DLCs. He's joining the newly reworked Nurgle and has a strong focus on spreading as many plagues as he can to as many different factions as he can and reaping plenty of rewards from Papa Nurgle along the way. But how exactly do you use him to get the most out of his mechanics? Let's take a look and find out. So his unique mechanic in the campaign is the Tally of Pestilence. This counts up the number of non-Nurgle armies and settlements currently affected by your faction's plagues. This is obviously going to go up and down as you spread new plagues and as current ones expire, because obviously they don't last forever. Upon reaching certain numbers of plagues, you'll gain several tiers of bonuses and enhance all of your plagues. At the Prodormal level, your faction gains an increase to research rate and Epidemius gains the Earthfather's Blessing ability. When a non-Lord or Hero unit nearby to Epidemius falls below 10% HP, they are immediately executed and in their place spawns a unit of Nurglings. This only has a one-time use and the enemy unit needs to be within 50 meters of Epidemius, but it can be a really powerful way to get rid of a really powerful unit if you target and time it just right. A non-Nurgle army affected by your plagues will suffer minus 4 leadership to all units. At the Surging tier, your faction gains 20% increased research rate and Epidemius' ability gets upgraded to Earthfather's Gift. This instead spawns a spawn of Nurgle. He also gains another use of his Tallyman's Blades ability, which is of course his unique ability in battle. Non-Nurgle enemies affected by plagues will gain the Plague Afflicted ability, which deals constant damage over the course of the entire battle. They suffer reduced casualty replenishment rates and even more leadership debuffs. At the Rampant tier, your faction gains an even further increase to research rate, and Epidemius now has the Earthhiver's Boon ability, which creates a spawn of Nurgle, as well as two extra uses of the Talimans Plague. Non-Nurgle armies still have that Plague Affliction, as well as even lower casualty replenishment rates and even higher leadership debuffs. And finally, at the Epidemical tier, your faction gains a massive 50% research rate bonus, Epidemius gains the Earthhiver's Benevolence ability, which will create a great unclean one when the hero is executed, and he gains plus three uses of his Talimans Blade's ability. Non Nurgle armies now have the Greater Plague Afflicted ability, which doubles the damage over time, effectively crushing any armor that you come up against that's affected by your plagues. As well as this, they have massive reduction to their casualty replenishment rate and leadership for the entire army. Now, take all of this with a big grain of salt because, in practice, getting all of these plagues out on the map to get, hell, even to get to the rampant tier is quite a challenge. Getting to Epidemical, you're going to need to have some serious micro and macro gameplay, constantly making cultists, constantly selling them out into places that are going to be spreading like wildfire. You're going to want to tweak your plague settings to make sure that they have the most duration and the most spread chance possible, and do everything that you can to spread them far and wide. Because believe me, you want those top tier bonuses, but getting there is going to be a real challenge. So in short, you're going to want to have plagues on the go constantly, with a big focus on spreading them to other factions rather than worrying about yourself. We're going for quantity over quality. The effects aren't really important, you just want whatever you can get out there affecting as many enemy settlements and armies as you possibly can. This is going to make managing your infections incredibly difficult, so it's going to be a good idea to focus on making as many as possible from buildings, battles, and of course spreading plagues to keep yourself stocked up for plague spreading and the cyclical buildings. Aside from the Tally of Pestilence, he also has a reduced cycle time for the Plague Flesh Poppies buildings, as well as an increased recruit rank for Plague Bearer units. Both of these effects give him a focus on Plague Bearers since he'll be able to have a lot of them in his recruitment pool and recruit them at a more elite level. With a couple of skill points and research projects, you could really catapult this somewhat basic unit into the stratosphere and spam them to your heart's content. And his final faction effect is an increased campaign movement range for Plague Cultists, and this simply helps with spreading plagues to far factions a lot quicker, so there's nothing to complain about there. For his Lord effects, he increases his army's melee attack when fighting enemies with plagues, so even more of a plague focus, so try to infect enemy armies right before you fight them for a huge advantage. As for his goals and expansion options, he starts in the exact north point of the map in the Chaos Waste. He has Malice Darkblade to the west and Daniel to the east. For his short victory conditions, you need to destroy Malice Darkblade, Boris Ursus and Malachi McKyson. Now, you can choose to be friends with Daniel if you want, but if you don't want that, I would advise taking him out early since he can take a while to get going, so it will only be hard to get rid of the later you leave it. Plus, if you just leave him alone, at least when I was playing, he attacked me later on anyway, so you might as well clear him out first. Of the objective factions, Malice is the closest and, like Daniel, will only get harder to take out the longer the game goes on, so I would say that he's the best priority for target number one. Once the starting war and possibly Daniel are dealt with, you should take the fight straight to him using the join war function from the broken wheel to avoid dragging Malkiv into things if he can help it. Now this will not be easy, but if you can draw him out and get rid of Malice, you should be able to tear through his pretty small territory pretty quick and wipe him out no problems. After this is done, I'd advise expanding to the west in some way to get more settlements and income. You can keep expanding all the way to Boris and take him out if you want, or build up enough cash and send a couple of armies across the sea to take on Malachi. Either way, you're going to be in for a very tough fight versus a very angry bearded dude, so just be ready. That said, both of them got taken out on like turn 28 without me even meeting them, so maybe it's not so hard after all. 
Moving over to Epidemius in battle. Now, looking at him, you wouldn't think it, but he is a surprisingly strong frontline battler. He's pretty tough and has great melee stats, as well as high armor-piercing anti-infantry magical and poison damage. That's a lot of words, but it basically means he can fight pretty much anything and do decent damage, as well as debuffing with poison, which, if you ask me, is one of the best effects in the entire game. Just makes enemy units worse at basically everything, so what's not to love? His hitbox isn't too big, but still, I would avoid getting totally surrounded by high damage, since he won't really be able to escape or survive, at least without some abilities. Now, the one major downside of him is that he is so incredibly painfully absolutely slow he's a melee lord who wants to be in with your melee troops but they're going to be stood there waiting for their lord for a good five minutes before he gets there because he has like 28 movement speed he's ridiculously slow it's painful that aside though he's pretty good he has the tallyman's blades ability which allow him to summon exalted plague bearers which are great for some backup or to throw into the back lines for an easy flank of course if you have one of the earth hours abilities from his mechanic if you keep him in the thick of things it just means that if an enemy unit gets kind of low close to him he'll finish them off and then spawn you for a unit and also it turns out he's a pretty good duelist because he just has that much bloody damage it's great Sadly, he has no other mounts, but he's always on his palanquin, so you don't really have to worry about him walking around with those big old legs of his. And as for his skill tree, it is fairly standard, but has a couple of unique bits. His Tally of Pestilence line, of course, is unique to only him, and it continues the focus on Plague Bearers, increasing their damage whilst reducing their upkeep. He also can buff his faction's growth, increase recruitment HP and physical resistance of all demonic units in his army to get moving faster. Physical resist kind of sucks these days, but that's not his fault. Reduced immune to duration for all plagues and reduced cost of making plagues, which obviously when you spread them as much as this guy, is going to be pretty clutch. It also allows him to remove the range limit for his Tallyman's Blades ability so he can summon exalted plague bearers anywhere. And lastly, the Slime Trail, which debuffs nearby enemies, which is pretty nice. So to sum up Epidemius in a few short sentences, he is absolutely in combat a strong frontlines leader. On the campaign map, he's a basic lord, but he's good at his job and he has a clear focus. He's very easy to pick up, but I would say he's quite hard to master. Getting that many plagues out will be very hard to maintain, and figuring out how to make that many infections will be even harder. The starting position does invite a lot of war, which can be overwhelming, so you're going to want to either get some allies in the form of Daniel, or decimate everyone that you can to establish yourself as a main power so that no one can touch you. Still, I think this is a very rewarding campaign once you get on top of things, even if it does take quite a while. And that's everything there is to know on how to get started with Epidemius in Warhammer 3. Let me know what you think of Lord and if you have any questions in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want more Warhammer 3 DLC content, then check out this video on the price changes happening with Thrones of Decay. There is more content coming, but nothing out yet, so give me like an hour.